G'day everyone, this is Ozzy Okdok, and thank you for visiting my channel, What's Okdok? I'm a doctor from Australia, and I specialize in the field known as occupational medicine. Today we'll be following on from the previous video, where we discussed the fundamental concept of hazard and risk. This time, we will discuss the various ways that these risks can be effectively managed in the workplace. Just to recap on what is hazard and what is risk. A hazard is anything or any situation with the potential to cause injury or harm. Risk is an evaluation of the likelihood of that hazard causing you harm and the consequence of it doing so. The inherent hazard is always constant. However, the level of risk can change depending on what type of control are in place. Perfect prevention is often impossible, but it is the duty of the employer to provide a safe workplace and ensure that the health and safety of workers are protected as is reasonably practicable. A widely accepted system known as the hierarchy of controls is used by many organizations to select the most appropriate control for a particular hazard in their workplace. This system, as you can see, is an inverted pyramid with the most reliable control that offers the highest level of protection at the top, while the least reliable control which offers the lowest level of protection is at the bottom. We will go into each level of control in detail. However, it is easier to understand each of these types of controls through the use of an example. We will use the example of a fictional worker named Bob, who works at a factory which manufactures paints. In the process of creating paint, he is potentially exposed to a number of hazardous ingredients on a daily basis. How does the workplace ensure that Bob's health and safety is protected, while still being able to continue his work in manufacturing paints on a daily basis? If Bob's workplace was to assess the risk of the various hazardous materials that Bob works with using the hierarchy of controls, the best type of control that they would choose would be elimination, as it offers the highest level of protection. In elimination, this means totally removing the hazard from the workplace. This is obviously the most effective way of reducing risk. It can, however, be the most difficult to implement, as the hazard may be a critical part of the process or end product. So for Bob, who may work with hazardous materials such as silica or chemicals such as isocyanates, these cannot be easily removed as they are inherent in the end product that he is making. If this is the case, then we must go down the hierarchy of controls to look for the next best control type, and this would be substitution. This is where a hazard is substituted with another hazard that is at a lower risk to health with little or no change in the end product or process. A common example would be a cleaner switching cleaning solution to a less toxic alternative following issues with skin irritation. For Bob, if a substitute can be used which maintains the integrity of the end product but is less hazardous to his health, then this would be definitely an effective control measure. If however, elimination or substitutions are not feasible, then we must move down to the next level which are engineering controls. These controls involve the inclusion of equipment and workplace designs which can be used to minimize the risk of a hazard to the worker. This could involve implementing equipment into the work design. Examples of this would be a mechanical device such as a hoist to move heavy loads. Another way is through implementing automation into the work process. An example would be having an automatic washing system instead of manually hand washing. Another type of engineering control can involve contamination removal through a ventilation process. An example would be local exhaust ventilation 
that is installed in order to remove airborne contaminants. Finally, isolation, which is a type of engineering control which creates separation of a hazard from the worker and work areas. This could be an actual physical barrier or where work processes are performed remotely. For Bob, it is common in the paint production industry for processes such as testing paints to be done remotely. The spray painting process can be partially automated and is usually done in an isolated spray booth that is always away from other workers. If Bob needs to enter the booth at any point, there are ventilation systems to ensure that lingering particles in the air are removed. Now as we move further down the hierarchy of controls, we find controls which may not be as effective as the ones previously mentioned, but are much easier to implement. Administrative controls includes changes to work methods or procedures to minimize exposure to a hazard at work. Examples include having an occupational health and safety program where support is provided to managers and workers. Having information and training of workers on health and safety at work. Having work policies which promote safe work practices regular maintenance schedules of equipment, safe work schedules which limits the time that workers are exposed to a hazard at work, and finally signage to warn of hazards at work. For Bob, this may mean that although he may work an 8 hour day, only a portion of that may be working with the hazardous materials in question. He would also be properly trained to know how to safely conduct himself while working in his particular role. This will be overseen by a supportive manager that is serious about maintaining the health of not only Bob, but also all workers in the factory. The final type of control, which is the least effective, but the easiest to implement, is the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE. PPE is equipment that can be worn by the worker. Its limitations are that it only offers protection to the worker themselves and only useful if properly used or strictly enforced. Examples of PPE include earmuffs, respirators, hard hats, gloves, and protective eyewear. For Bob, this would involve the wearing of a respirator such as a full face mask with personal oxygen supply, which would provide protection on inhalation of harmful airborne particles in the surroundings. In summary, in this video, we discussed the hierarchy of controls as a system of managing risk in the workplace. Each of the types of controls have their own unique strengths and weaknesses, and it is up to the employer to implement the appropriate controls in relation to the work that is performed. Thank you for watching this video. I hope that I provided you with some valuable information in the area of occupational medicine. I value any feedback, therefore please feel free to leave a comment on any of my videos, as well as a like if you enjoyed it. If you find my content of value, please subscribe and share them with your family and colleagues. Have a good day.